Hi, YouTube. Welcome to Unnecessary Roughness. Jack, tell them what you want them to do. Like, subscribe, share, comment, do it all. Do it all. Uh, Brandon is in Mississippi right now. He will not be a part of this episode, but don't worry. He's got great content coming for you. We have a jam-packed episode. We talk all news and notes, and we take your questions from my Instagram, which you know goes off the rails. Make sure you enjoy the episode. Hi, welcome to Unnecessary Roughness, Barstool Sports College football podcast. I tried my best again, guys, to do uh, Brandon's voice, but I feel like I failed at that one. Did I fail? I mean, it's it's hard to do Brandon's voice. It's like it's, <laughs> that's nothing against you. That's just uh, how the world. Wo- it's Brandon's, as you all can see, is not here right now, but he's kind of here. He's kind of here. He's in spirit. Um, first of all, you know, Brandon Walker, self-proclaimed heart and soul of this podcast. Also, it is his birthday, the day that we are recording this. Um, he's also in Mississippi. And later in this episode, you will also hear him interviewing Mike Leach, which I want to ask before we get into this episode, Katie and Jack, obviously Katie and Jack are both here. How many times do you think he's going to giggle or laugh at something that Mike Leach says that if Mike Leach was at Washington state still, he would not laugh at. (laughs) So you're saying like fake laugh? Yes. Hey, I mean, I would assume it's going to be interesting. Uh, The dynamic. (laughs) I mean, I, Ultimately, we want this connection to be great. Obviously, there is already a connection, but we want the interview to be great. But yes, there will be very some aspects of the interview that longtime Roughnecks and us will find very funny. Also, like it's your own head coach. I feel like we would all do that. Oh, a hundred percent. Oh, I'm not. I'm not saying he's wrong for doing it at all. Like I would do the same thing. But it's so funny to think like you know you go back a few years ago. Um, and now, but also like I, every time I think of Brandon interviewing either like Mike Leach or whoever it may be, I think of that picture of him with Dak Prescott. You you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, where it's like yeah, Dak yeah. when he was at Mississippi state and Brandon looks like he's seen Jesus for the first time. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It was like a, a local news photo. It's like, yeah, that's what I'm picturing Brandon doing with Mike Leach. And on top of that, we've always said coach Leach is like really fucking funny. I laugh at everything that guy says. So the interview will be at the end of this episode. Uh, we are presented by High Noon. Have you guys gotten to try the kiwi and the, the yes. guava yet? Yes. And I, I've tried only the kiwi. I've not tried the guava. I love the kiwi. How does so, it match up against peach? Well, peach will always be. I mean, peach, we know this. If you've listened to this podcast a million times, I'm begging. I'm pleading. I don't know how many years I have to ask for this. I want to take a bath in peach high noon. I feel like this can't be this hard. Why are people not letting me take a bath in high noon? Uh, I don't know either. It's a perfect photo shoot. It's literally free advertising for high noon. A lot of people would look at the photo. Like it would be a very popular photo. Um, just my prediction. I would hope so. I mean, here's the thing. It's like, I'm serious. Like if somebody will get me enough peach high noon, I will get in a bathtub with it and I will allow photos to be taken and it's free high noon advertisement. And I would be very happy. So to answer your question, Katie, uh, it's not peach, but it is delicious. And obviously they're coming out with the summer packs. You know, they did the same thing last year. They're adding the kiwi, they're adding the guava. And as you know, if you listen to this a million times, we all love high noon, you know, just to reiterate, it tastes way fucking better than all the other shit because it's real vodka and it's not the chalky stuff. And I've been, I've been on a, a roll recently with people, um, that I'm, you know, I'm still in Connecticut. I'm still with the Rutledges. I may never leave. They, I may be a full-time babysitter, but I've been on a roll recently where I've just been like mocking people that are drinking anything but high noon in that, that seltzer rain. I would also say that if you did the bath, I unfortunately think that you could probably sell like little bits of the bath water. Of the high name for people. No, I'm yeah. saying. No, I'm saying <clears throat> the photo. We can do both, but the photo to be made is you're literally in a bathtub with high noon peach cans, and the peach cans are like it's all it's filled with peach cans, and then obviously they're also f- over your cans and like uh, private parts too. <laughs> Wait, so, I put that lightly, Jack. Okay, so, but, so, so cans okay. over my cans. Yeah, so you're like, you're naked in the bathtub, but like not in the photo, of course. 
but in it's the like, same way that Brandon was for the for the photo shoot for the calendar. The roses. the roses, yeah. And you know what's yeah. fucked up? Now that I'm saying this out loud, you know how many people will shame me for doing that? That like loved the Brandon thing, and I don't give a fuck. So here's what we're gonna do. I figured it out. High noon. If you're listening, Jack, put this out on Twitter too, so that we can really get the people going. Um, I will do it with the high noon cans in the bathtub, kind of like when, you know, in the, the calendar with, with, um, Brandon, with the roses, John Feidelberg did the one with the, the sour patch kids. Yep. I'll do that. And then we will open the cans, not my cans, those cans, yep. and we will pour it into the bathtub. And then I will get into the actual high noon. And Katie, you're saying we could sell that. Oh, I, I someone will, someone out there will buy that. Huh? Yeah, no, hundred percent. One thousand percent, Katie's. Thinking. We we are creeps, but hey, you know what? It, the we're the inmates are running the asylum without Brandon. Um, we're gonna get into all the news and notes. I did an an AMA on my Instagram, which I haven't done in a long time for college football for this podcast. I know we did it a lot during quarantine because we had nothing else to do. Um, but I did do that, and Katie sifted through the answers. Katie, how were there a lot of pervy ones, or was They're it actually? actually- there weren't bad. There's more people saying, I want to know what the pervy questions were than there were actually <laughs> pervy questions. Uh, well, cause I, I prefaced it. If you, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I went and I said, you know, Hey, ask us anything college football related. Sorry, pervs, which I didn't know if it would have the opposite effect. I didn't know if it would be like, they would try to be as pervy as possible. Um, I didn't read any of them. I have them now from Katie shout out Katie for helping me with that. Um, but I'm actually shocked because I felt like people were probably going to be pervy. Although I will say to both of you, I know we haven't done a read Casey's DMs in a while. I got the most dick pics that I've gotten in a day the other day. We've hit a new, a new record. What from what? For like the most in one day. What what, what, what did you yeah, yeah. what what like led to it? Was there something that got people going? I I I put up a I put up a it wasn't even that much of a thirst trap. I put it was the 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 day that I dressed like Tiger Woods. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I purposely dressed like Tiger Woods. Um, I, you know, black hat, red hoodie. But that's the thing is I was wearing like a baggy hoodie. So I don't know. But I got I got 10 dick pics that day. It's the masters. I guess they make people horny. Horny. I will say I was being pretty horny online over the weekend. I was talking about how hot Tiger is. I was talking about how hot Tom Brady is. That video that he put out, Jesus Christ. Um, also Alex Cora is all, all of a sudden super hot with that beard. So I was just horny. So maybe that was, that was why. Yep. I would, I would assume that's the issue at hand. Well, here. it still didn't work. Um, all right. So obviously a lot of stuff has happened. We, you know, we don't want to take too much time talking about this, but we do need to mention it because it's a very sad story. Uh, Dwayne Haskins dying this past week in Florida. He was walking along the highway, got hit, uh, by some sort of vehicle, um, you know, obviously the outpouring on Twitter that you guys have seen was unbelievable. Dwayne Haskins being one of the, you know, the best college quarterbacks ever, you know, didn't necessarily paint out in the NFL, but that doesn't fucking matter. I know Adam Schefter came out, uh, with that and caught a lot of fire from a lot of people. It doesn't matter what Dwayne Haskins did in the NFL. Um, really sad story, Jack. And obviously a guy that, you know, was so young with so much potential. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, when I saw it, it was early Saturday morning that uh, it got reported and it was, you know, it was shocking because he was, I still, it feels like it wasn't yesterday, but it does feel like it was yesterday that he was throwing like for six or seven touchdowns against Michigan on that, on that game uh, that he just lit them up. He's, he was a great quarterback and obviously he seems to have been a great friend and teammate uh, Mm -hmm. son there because the outpouring of support, after what happened and people talking about how great of a, just a human he was uh, makes it even more sad because obviously uh, he wasn't just a football player. He was more than that. And uh, he, he will be missed. And I will know he will be remembered, especially uh, with, there was a lot of outpouring support on Ohio state's campus too. I mean, he's a legend at Ohio state and he will be forever. Yeah. Terrible news. Obviously very young. You know, he was about to turn 25. Um, Just awful. And I mean, again, you know, social media takes a life of its own, uh, but you can really tell people that have made a huge impact um, on the people around them, him being one of them. And, you know, I think the Adam Schefter stuff, like I know people were really caught up in that drama and how he worded the first tweet, which I do think was poor wording. Um, I also don't think it was a malicious thing at all. I think people took it, you know, again, like I don't even want to offer an opinion on that, but I think for some reason, 
that took more of a life than it needed to, because at the end of the day, we're, you know, I, you know, I didn't know Dwayne Haskins personally, but I know that his friends and family obviously are, are grieving that loss and will be for a long time. So, um, you know, thoughts and prayers to his family. And obviously he'll be a legend forever. It doesn't matter what his career looked like post Ohio state. I mean, those games that he played with the Buckeyes were unbelievable. Yeah. And he's, you know, you said it, he's going to be number one uh, not, as one remembered as one of the greatest Ohio state quarterbacks. And he was going to be remembered for that before this too. This isn't like right. we're rewriting history. He was when he was the quarterback for Ohio state, he was one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. Um, I I'm blanking on who won the Heisman that year, but he could have won the Heisman if it wasn't for, for who won it that year. And I just, I mean, it was shocking. It's like 25. So young. And yeah, like you said, it doesn't matter about his NFL career. Like, you know, it was sad to see the Schefter tweet, but, you know, I think he probably just made an honest mistake. And uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Haskins and to his friends, family, teammates. Yeah, it's it's you're you're left speechless because it's like he was such a big part of that season. And now he's just, you know, it's he's gone. So, yeah, very Definitely. sad. Yeah, very, very sad. Um, so again, thoughts and prayers to his friends and family in the Ohio State community and the NFL community. Um, but we'll move on to some different news. Um, I don't know. Where do you guys want to start? I mean, obviously, the JT Daniels news blew up today. Uh, he's going to West Virginia with two years of eligibility left. And I do think that this is a good move for him because of what we saw happen at Georgia. But he was also hurt. Like, I, I still can't figure out the way I feel about JT Daniels. Like, we we put him at the top of our list last year. He obviously got hurt. And Stetson and Bennett ended up playing. Like, what JT Daniels are we going to see in Morgantown? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, he's obviously talented. He was he he was very good at U, uh, USC this season. Then he played the full season. Then he tore his ACL, I think, in week one of 2019 or 2020. Now, and then he, so it was probably 2019 because he played on Georgia in 2020. He was not bad at Georgia. It was just, they believed in Stetson Bennett and we talked about why they did and it paid off. I don't, West Virginia is an interesting place for him to land. Uh, he obviously feels he fits there. Will they become a big 12 contender? I don't think so, but they will be someone that's in every game. Uh, they're, He's going to be, he's going to be good. I think I I'm a JT Daniels believer, at least personally. Yeah. I, I think, Oh, go ahead, Kitty. I think it is really interesting to see what he's going to look like when he is fully healthy. Cause I mm -hmm. think that I wasn't following when he was at USC, but I think at moments in Georgia, we're like, Oh shit, like he can do this. So I think with a full season, hopefully knock on wood, but yep. the starter has full confidence. Like I'm yeah. Same with Jackson. I'm very interested to see, I, I, do I think he'll be a Heisman candidate? I don't know. Could does he have the potential and groundwork to be? Like I think he's already kind of top fifteen ish for voting or for odds. But I, yeah, again, West, is, does he have enough stuff in West Virginia around him to make them competitive in the Big Twelve? That I don't know. He, I mean, he was a five star, one of the best recruits mm -hmm. in his class. He does like uh, I think Katie, I completely agree with. He does have the stuff to win Heisman. And personally, at least from the perspective of being a five star athlete and being successful before at a at USC and even at Georgia. But at, we'll see how he does at West Virginia. I mean, we saw uh, Will Greer do phenomenal there. Yeah. So we it's not impossible. Yeah, no, it's definitely not impossible. And like, you know, we've all said it's like we're going to see what what JT Daniels we're going to get. It is hard for me sometimes to like wrap my head around the fact that it's your third school. And like, again, the transfer portal has completely opened that up, but it's not like he's been shit and not been able to play. He just keeps getting hurt. Um, so if he can stay healthy at West Virginia, I mean, we were even talking about last season, like how many times do we bring up like, well, is JT Daniels going to be ready for the playoff? Is JT Daniels going to be ready to play in the national championship? Like even though Stetson Bennett got them there, we were still like, ah, you know, what's going on with JT Daniels? So if that's the guy that he is, I think they could be a contender in the big 12. I mean, obviously West Virginia, you know, it's a long way to go, but if you had a quarterback like that at his potential that we think he had, like they can be pretty fucking good. Yeah, they could. And you know, the big 12 is not wide open, but it is kind of open. Like it, it, and well, Jack, you don't think so, and Brandon doesn't think. I don't so, think you so guys personally. Are on the Texas train, you assholes. 
But it is open enough for where if JT and uh, that team takes the next step forward, maybe. But yeah, it's, it's finally the JT Daniels saga is over, at least for now. It, he was the, He's kind of like the last guy to really commit somewhere. Yeah, the I, mean, yeah I mean, we're, we're in the middle of April. Uh, I have to do a side note. Katie, does Jack holding that microphone look as funny to you as it does me? It does look like a big coffee can. I was only because I was watching Blue Mountain State earlier and I saw the episode. It does look a little bit like a pocket pussy. That's <laughs> from I, far away. It's the same narrative. I lost design. the like uh, what holds it up, so I have to hold it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, it's fine. Um, well, I mean, whenever we do, like, what is it? Usually Fourth of July week when we do the best of that has to be in it. Because um, I was going to say it just looks weird because he's holding it like a dick. I was going to go there. You just went straight pocket pussy. Hey, I did just watch the episode. But it's a, I guess it, it, it's a pocket pussy. <laughs> or a Yeti. It's the same kind of shape. The Yeti you remember when Ben Mintz didn't know what that was? I uh, do. Poor, does he know what MILF stands for? Or I don't know. That's that's TBD. Um, I think it was at the gambling cave in, in Hoboken. Uh, Katie, I know you were there. Jack, I don't know if you were there that day, but somebody said pocket pussy. And he was like, what's that? And no one wanted to answer him. Like the whole room went silent. You no, know, he didn't know who Selena Gomez was. What? Yeah, two like a few days ago on the rundown, someone brought her up. And he was like, "Who's that?" I was like, "She's one of the most famous people ever." Yeah, for sure. Um, also, and I do, you know, I know Brandon and Mincy have their own like back and forth. Ben Mince's take on pimento cheese is is insulting, diabolical, heinous, horrendous. Just whatever bad word I can use. You cannot be from the South and not like pimento cheese. Pimento cheese is delicious. I've never had it. Katie, you had it when we went to Starkville, right? Oh, yeah. Isn't it? So, it's good. so fucking good. I got to have like, it. I, you know, I said last episode, like, I, I don't even, you know, I'm not a Texan anymore. I like the, the East Coast, but I'll be damned if people talk shit about pimento cheese. <laughs> also, one damned. last for the JT Daniels, how now West Virginia, do you see who they play first game of the year? Pitt, right? Yeah. And that's Pitt's quarterback, Keaton Slovis. Who, where did he play? USC, West well, Virginia, JT Daniels. So it's like the USC, what could have been game? Well, Slo- Slovis was technically the reason that JT Daniels transferred out of USC because right. USC thought that Slovis was going to be their guy. Obviously not. I mean, he was under Hel- Clay Helton, but now it, it is the matchup of transfer USC quarterbacks. Well, and, you know, in 2019, you brought it up earlier, Jack, like whenever he got hurt, like I remember watching that USC game when Keaton Slovis came in and it was like, oh, my God, they're on their third string quarterback. And I think we were actually in Madison. And, you know, I'll bring up Madison however many times I can just being like, what the fuck are they going to do? And Clay Helton was on the hot seat so many times at that point anyways. But that is interesting. Pitt versus West Virginia. Um, the transfer portal is going to make all of this you know, so crazy. And like we can just move on to that stuff. I mean, with the the quotes from Nick Saban and Dabo Sweeney and like all of those, you know, all the coaches kind of coming out and talking about it before we get to that. My sister just hanging out with Dabo. What the fuck? Oh yeah. That was like, I was like, what's going on? Uh, Yeah. I mean, that she, she doesn't like, she doesn't follow college football at all. Like I've said this before, like she'll still call me on Saturday mornings when we're like live on the road and then be like, Oh, why didn't you answer? It's like, I don't know, Allie, I'm on stage. I cover college football, but she said she was like, Oh, I'm at this Clemson donor event and the coach knows you didn't say football didn't say anything and I was like well (laughs) which coach was it and she was like I don't know the football one and I was like Dabo and she was like I think that's his name and then she just fires off the photo I'm like yeah Allie that's Dabo that that's that's one of the best coaches in college football she's like oh he's really nice his wife's really nice I was like how are we from the same parents how I guarantee you Brandon would respond be like he's nice that southern charm bullshit trying to do some Christianity. All right. Like, well, yeah. Well, Brandon's not here. Me. Although, again, as a reminder, if you are listening, Brandon will be with his head coach at the end of this episode, interviewing Mike Leach in Mississippi on his own birthday. You know, what a birthday present for Mr. Thomas Brandon Walker. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess we can go to, and of course, I loved, you know, when I tweeted it and said, you know, I made the, the I said, I asked my sister why Dabo wants to blow up the best college 
our best sport on the, in the world. And the amount of Clemson fans that came out like, Oh, like he doesn't want to blow it up. Like that's what the sec do, is doing. I was like, no guys, it's an actual quote from Dabo. He said that he thinks college football needs a complete blow up um, after all the NIL rules and the transfer portal. And that's not something that's new for him. You know, we know we, he's been saying that for a while. I just think that it is finally like, all right, well, what are you going to do about it? Because it's not going to slow down anytime soon. So our guy, Brandon, who uh, later on in the episode will make an appearance with Mike Leach is in Mississippi this week for his birthday. And, you know, he was tweeting about fishing. Katie, you and I have been to Mississippi with Brandon. We know how much he loves to sit in his boat. He loves to sit in the water. He loves to sit and pick in the grass. And he's most likely wearing his bird dog bathing suit because it's the most comfortable bathing suit and it has the built-in soft, silky inner liner that never rides up. And we know Brandon doesn't like when things ride up his ass. No, because I was going to say <laughs> something, but then I stopped myself. However, uh, <laughs> he does not like things riding up his ass for sure. And they not only have that, you know, we know he, had, Brandon for that, that short sin of time was um, trying to be back in the gym. So they have the gym shorts that are amazing. They have the khaki shorts. Uh, Brandon loves bird dogs. I have felt his bird dogs off of him, not while he is wearing them. That is a no-no. I have touched the bird dog clothing when they're not on his body. Fantastic, fantastic fabric. They look great on everybody. And like I said, Brandon's probably sitting in his boat by himself right now. And when I say boat, it's like a wooden, like, what would you call that boat, Katie? Like a canoe that's like not a full canoe? It's not a boat. Yeah, it's. It's like a fishing boat, but like on a local level, it's just like it's like a it, little it's, thing. He's not on a boat that has a motor. He's on a boat that he has to like. He might get caught out in the it's middle. It's like a launch. Yeah, but most importantly, if he does fall in, which that boat could could capsize at any point, he is wearing his bird dogs. They have, like I said, it's summer's coming up. It's bathing suit season. Uh, and and if you know guys out there, Jack, you can attest. You need a good lining inside your bathing suit, or your day can be ruined. Hundred percent, and bird dogs, and we've said it a few times in this ad already. Bird dogs is um, known for that. Even before they had their swimming suits, more so their shorts. It's known for how comfortable it really is. And one of the biggest things that, when it comes to comfort, is not having a short or bathing suit that rides up. Now, a yes. girl, a woman on this podcast can relate a little bit, but it's a little bit different for guys for obvious reasons. And it's a big aspect. <laughs> Give us a biology lesson, Jack. What? Give us a biology lesson. Yeah. No, I'm going to stay away from that. Okay. Uh, All right. But the, I will say bird dogs, when you put them on, it just, you feel free. Uh, you feel, you feel free. free. That's important. And not only is it important to feel free, it's also important to get free shit. We love free shit. So yep. you can go to birddogs.com and enter the promo code Walker. Mm. They'll throw in a free bird dogs whistle tip football, which we talked about last week. Love a good whistle tip, like the sound it makes, the spiral, beautiful. Again, birddogs.com, promo code Walker, and boom, not only I'm going to do it, but, but wait, there's more. Not there's only more? A, there's more. Not only a whistle tip football, you'll also get a free bird dogs dad hat with your pair of bird dogs. And you will not take any of these things off. Brandon Walker promises. So you get nothing riding up your ass. Great swimsuit, great gym shorts, great khaki shorts, a football to play with your bros or your girls or whoever, and a dad hat sold. Birddogs.com enter promo code Walker. There's been a lot of quotes this week about, no, not a lot. I mean, the two. You could argue two of the, the biggest coaches in college football, Dabo and Nick Saban, discussing NIL and how it potentially has downsides. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Nick Saban's quote to the AP was, I don't think what we're doing right now is a sustainable model, um, which is a nicer, more PC way of saying what Dabo said, which is, we need a complete blow up. And I mean, there, you know, there is... Obviously, we've talked about this in the past when, you know, when we talk about playing or paying college football players or paying college athletes, there's not ever going to be a great answer. And I, I go back to this every single time I wrote a thesis paper about it in college. It's that hamster wheel argument. Like every time you think you have an answer, it flips upside down. The amount of money flowing into college football right now because of the NIL and because of the transfer portal, like it is crazy and it is absurd 
but it's also like, it's been pouring in in different ways, whether it's facilities, whether it's stadiums, whether it's coaches. And now it's like more people are paying attention to it because the athletes are actually finally getting paid, which I think that I've always thought that they should in some form or fashion. And the NIL to me is a perfect, uh, it's a perfect, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Why am I drawing a blank? Um, what am I looking for? I don't know. Like when people agree, but like they, they give up. What the fuck? Oh, Why am I having a bond a Compromise? Moment? Compromise. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> wow. So that the, one was tough. Um, the, the quote from Saban today uh, was that creates it when talking about the current state of NIL. Well, you kind of got it, but this is a full one that uh, on three made a graphic of. That creates a situation where you can basically buy players. You can do it in recruiting. I mean, if that's what we want in college football, oh, no, if that's what we want college football to be, I don't know. Now, obviously, Saban's saying this, and he's saying it from the perspective of Alabama and knowing I can and will now buy everybody. However, I think back to just how it was before. I don't think it's that much different, you know? No. Well, and, you know, in Lincoln Riley in the, this, that same, you know, the same article, you know, he said, I think that anybody cares about college football is not real pleased with what's going on because that wasn't the intention, um, you know, changing recruiting. And he said, and I'm sure at some point there's going to be a market correction, if you will, with recruiting. Um, it was going on under, you know, under the table. I mean, we go back to like the pony excess, like that, you know, that it's been going on forever. I think where the issue then becomes is it, and we, we've talked about this, like it's beating a dead horse. It's like, you know, Nick Saban's even said it. He said it again in this same article is that like players in Alabama are making way more money than players in other places. Then you even get like the micro look at it. And it's like players on Alabama are making more than other players on Alabama. So then you're going to have recruits looking at it and being like, well, why is this guy making more than me? So there's definitely not a great model in place, but it's moving the right direction to me because, you know, you talk about paying athletes and then you got title nine and you've got all that shit that goes along with it. Just let them make money off their name and, and image. And that's what they're trying to do. It's just going to be tough because it is going to fuck up recruiting for a little bit, but it's better than not giving them any opportunity to make money off their names. Yeah. It's, just, it's tough. I, I like, I don't, I would love to hear from the perspective of like, not just a quote more so, a debate and with a Lincoln Riley or Nick Saban or Dabo, because obviously they don't want to say too much to affect their recruiting, but what do they mean by college football? The people that care about it don't like where it's going. Like, what does that mean? Um, in what direction? And is what was the direction it was going before NIL? Cause is it that much different? It is from the perspective we know about the deals now, but we're not, we weren't oblivious to what college football was before this. It's not, this isn't like a hundred percent new, you know? No. Well, and it, that quote to me feels very like, Oh, we've gotten caught. So now we're saying like, we don't like it, but like as fans, we've all said, if you aren't cheating, you aren't trying every single school in the country has been cheating. We know that. And if you think your school's not cheating, you're a fucking idiot. Like that's, what's been happening. So now it's on the table. So, you know, again, when you look at all these coaches, I mean, even like Lane Kiffin, who I, we're going to talk about in a second for that weird ass social media post, um, but you know, Lane Kiffin said like, there's going to start being, you know, potentials with donors, wanting a different player than coaches wanting it. And I see where that happened, where that can be an issue. That's always been an issue. It just wasn't public. Yeah. Um, like the donors. Yeah. The donors want a different player, but like it's also, that's nothing new. It's like the donors want their, their nephew on the team too. And I'm right. Like we know that there's definitely nepotism like that in college football before, like there's people on teams. Like, I mean, Dabo's kids were on all the teams. Like this isn't it seems like there's a lot of complaining here where it's like I'm not sure if it really matters. It's like, yeah, there are issues here, but it's not. It seems very normal. It's like, no, you're running a business and the market got open a little bit more and you were protected from a lot of issues. And now you your job got a little bit a little bit harder. It's weird. All these top coaches are talking about this poor, like it's poor. But if I was a top coach at a top program right now, I would, I would be very happy because I have the most money. I have the biggest donors. We can take advantage of this. Or maybe it's 
coming from a perspective of wait a second, maybe the top like different teams will be able to be successful during this, not the top teams anymore. That's what I'm thinking. Like, why are they so against it? Uh, is it because they th- they're scared? Like, oh, out of nowhere, some team like SMU will come out of nowhere. I don't know. I think it's because that the bigger players actually have to go and push for players now. Like, they, they can't mm-hmm. just be like, hi, I'm Alabama, come here. They actually have to work. Like, they're, they're probably losing recruits to smaller schools because of NIL deals. And now they're like, all of a sudden, like, oh, going and whining. Like, I get it, sure. But at the same time, just like, go go win on the field. You're, you're, right. you're Alabama and you're Clemson. Like, boo fucking who? Like, yeah, that's, that's um, a re- really good point from Katie. It's like, maybe it's like, oh, yeah, boo hoo. You can't, like, keep a stock, a, a refrigerator fill, full of five stars anymore because they know they can go to, uh east carolina and be the starter and make a lot of money instead of being the third string on alabama until their junior year yeah i know it's a great point and it's also like the you know it's kind of like airing dirty laundry a little bit because like it's now like there's a spotlight on what these coaches have been doing for a long time um and to be fair you know nick saban did continue on and say he does think you know that players should be paid you know he said it's i'm fine for players getting money um but the I think where the the situation with him at least it looks like is you know he's saying it's basically the NFL model without contracts, which there is an element to that you know that players don't have contracts you know and and Lane Kiffin kind of said the same thing as well. So it's like Nick Saban's not saying like hey we shouldn't have the NIL deal. He's saying there should be more ramifications in it if it's if you know players can just switch around and and whatever. But it's like you're getting paid $10 million a year, $11 million a year, whatever it is that he's getting paid. Like it's not going to be a a foul proof, foolproof. I never say that right. Opportunity for these guys, but come on, just like, you're still going to get your players. It's Alabama. It's Clemson, you know, Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss, you know, I mean, it's Lane Kiffin. People listen to what he says, but you know, Lincoln Riley at USC, like these are all the guys that can get players no matter what and have donors in their, the, you know, in the palm of their hand. I'm sorry, you're going to have to like fight donors now for players. You've been fighting donors for players. If they want player A and you want player B, that's just now on the table for the public to see, not just behind closed doors. Yeah, it's just, it's, we're at a point in college football where it's changing again. And guess what? Like, yeah, some dinosaurs and rhinos will be left behind. (laughs) You know what I mean? And, but if you want to evolve with the sport and continue to win, you have to evolve with the sport and continue to win. It's like, oh, it's like, oh, college football is changing because of the spread. Yeah, well, things change, you know, like right when you came up in media, Casey, the way to do it was to like be a sideline reporter, then like put in your years. But the model changed when you were still and still smart enough. Well, you still are smart, but I mean, like still. Well, thank you, Jack. I appreciate you that. You weren't <laughs> like you weren't like 55 in a rhino and like so mad that it was changing you adjusted to how the media landscape was going and you benefit from that because you could have been at that time, like, no, we can't, there's too much stuff going on on the internet. Sports media should all be through ESPN and whatnot. But people- well, there are a lot of people that still do think that, you know, I mean, I don't know if you guys have caught sports center recently, uh, unless Laura is on it. Um, I don't like, I will not ever slander anything that Laura's on, but it's like shit now. I mean, sports center is absolute shit, but when I yeah, was growing up, it was like, you have to be on Sports Center. You know, you have to be, you know, Aaron Andrews is the one who really uh, has it made. And not, that's not to say that they, those jobs aren't still great, but you're right. Like you have to evolve with it. Nick Saban is a great example of that. You know, he's evolved his teams and the way his teams play, just like Bill Belichick has when college football and the NFL changes. So that that's just, that's just true with anything in life. You know, you look yeah. at the NBA, you look at major league baseball, you look at everything, you have to be able to evolve. The issue with college sports has now become, it's such a big business. You know, March madness obviously makes billions of dollars that they have to be able to find a way to do it. So these coaches are going to whine. They're going to complain. There's not a great answer. I can't fix it all, but it's going to be fixed at some point because at some point, you know, another issue was a problem and now it's not anymore. So coaches coming and going with that along with that, um, you know, and I, I, again, I hate that I'm introducing this topic because some asshole out there is going to be like, Oh, she's bringing up A&M, but a huge thing out of A&M is that they're now going to be having um, like basically like a, a farm league for college football players with the, you know, the Houston Chronicle reported it saying, you know, we're going to get to players earlier than later. And that to me opens up a completely different can of worms when you're talking about committing to these schools. 
Yeah. I mean, I made a joke kind of on the Honest Air Roughness account, but it's like, you know, is college football going towards the, the, the European soccer model <laughs> where like you get a eight year old and you put him into a, an academy and yeah, he goes to school, quote unquote, but he also is just focused on football. It's a little bit different because you can't you can play like five soccer games a day. You can't do that with football. But is this what these schools are going to do? Because, I mean, that's how any or that's how European soccer works. It's like you get an eight year old, 10 year old, 11 year old, and then they're just in the Manchester City Academy until they and then eventually they go and play for Manchester City unless another school or club I'm saying club for soccer but if it was school buys their rights from them uh, but like will they allow I don't know it it seems like that's what they were kind of hinting at it's like Texas A&M will have their own like IMG Academy kind of thing yeah no I mean Katie sent it in the group and I was just like I hadn't heard anything of it to be completely honest with you and I know that they haven't like said for sure what they're going to do but Katie it does kind of look like they're going to be like okay, well, we'll give you NIL type of of deals early on because we want to have the opportunity to have you when you turn, uh, you know, 17, 18, 19, however old you are when you're a freshman in college, but we want the rights to you as like a 10 year old. Yeah. I also think it's interesting that I I think it's going to keep kids making smarter decisions. Like I I saw today in in college basketball, like one of the UNC players, Armando is is staying, this whole loop back around a college football, bear with me, Um, (laughs) how... Like maybe he could have gone to the draft, but his stock is not really like I'm seeing the highest is maybe third round. So because of NIL, he'll stay in school and make money and then kind of increase the draft stock and still be there. So I think this is going to apply to football players. We're going to see a lot more people instead of rushing like Sam Hartman. I think he, he's returning. So instead of like rushing to the draft, he's like, I can make money in college. I can keep on doing this, help my draft stock instead of maybe prematurely because I feel like there's always some players that try to go or like have the preconceived notion that they can make it in the NFL when everyone else around them is like, you might get lucky if you get signed somewhere, but like right. you're not there. So I think NLI is going to help a lot in that aspect and not. Well, in- and, and also, I mean, like you bring that up, Katie, it's like a lot of times you see, and it's really sad that when it happens, like you've got these guys that probably could use another year or two in college football, but they've got some agent that like wants to take their money right away. Um, and they're like, you know, Hey, like we think you can make it in the NFL, you know, we'll get you this big contract because they want this kid's money. Um, and then sometimes that doesn't pan out where now, you know, unless you're like a guy that, you know, for a fact, you're going to get drafted early and you know, for a fact, you're going to land on a team. You don't have to listen to some shady fucking snake agent. You can say, no, I'm going to make money off of NIL and then I'm going to go. So it, I, you know, again, it, it, this is all benefiting the players. That's why people are pissed. That's why the NCAA is pissed. That's why everybody is pissed when you start benefiting the quote student athletes, when in college football and college basketball for the most part, and then, you know, you get to the lower in sports, it's a business. They're not students. And anybody who still thinks that like, it's like, Oh, my kid had to play the pay for school. Your kid wasn't fucking good enough to play in the NFL. I don't know what to tell you. So like, this is just, it's that same argument, but now players are getting the opportunity to stay in college longer, which you would think colleges would like, because they're going to have their guys in, you know, I mean, like you look at, at any of these players that leave early at these big programs, you're going to get to keep them for longer because they can make money in college. Like that should be a good thing. Yeah. Agreed. 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 Uh, before we get to the AMA and then Brandon's interview with Mike Leach, we do have to talk about the other coach in the great old state of Mississippi, uh, our guy, Lane Kiffin, who we know loves to yuck it up on social media, loves to say some shit, but boy, his latest, um, his latest tweet was weird. I'm going to be our latest viral tweet was very weird. Do we think it was like a recruiting thing? Him just trying to be social in the neighborhood or just kind of be like, hey, chicks. Jack, I, hope I, it's not you, I feel like Jack is the expert on all of this. So the picture was him with like, I don't know, 40 girls. Maybe that's too many. Yeah, 30. if not more. Like tons of girls going to homecoming or prom what was it prom i think prom yes very strange photo yeah he also i mean he also did post the a photo with him with the guys too like yeah, i bet it was how prom works at least it worked for me was you go to a party to take photos at someone's house that like has a nice backdrop or a pool and that was where they went whoever's house that was maybe they it could honestly be i wonder what the connection is i don't know if it's he's dating one of the 
the high school students' mothers, or or it's like it's a donor of Mississippi, so, or he just like I don't know how he got there. He did post the fo- the photo that went viral was with him and all the senior seniors in high school. I would assume because it's probably senior prom, and which is weird because he's a grown man and they're 17, 18 at the oldest, probably some 16 too. And that's obviously <laughs> weird. He did, he, he did post the, he did post the one with him with the guys too. But Yeah. I mean, he clearly wasn't being creepy. Like I will say that, but it just looks creepy. Oh no. Just- I mean, but how did he not know this would be like, I don't get like, was he trolling? I I, I don't get it. And I mean, I did the same thing at prom and homecoming, you know, you, all the girls take photos, all the guys take photos and the couples take photos. I get that. Um, but you have to, a part of like Lane Kiffin's really smart. We know that like he acts like a dumbass sometimes, but he's really smart. Like he had to have known there's no way you take a photo with a bunch of teenage girls in, in prom dresses and post it on the internet and not think people are going to be like, what the fuck are you doing with high school students dressed in prom, prom dresses? Yeah. It's just like, if it was like, Oh, my daughter was in it. Okay. Cool. But it, I don't think, I think his kids, he has two, he, you know what? No, I don't think his kids are old enough to be in high school. No, but his kids didn't. The fact they did it with 40 girls. I think it's, I think it would have been weird if it was like one or two. Well, it'd be different if like you said, Jack, if he was like, oh, this is my daughter's prom. Like remember when Gene Chizik did that a few years ago? I mean, at this point it's been like a long time ago, but like, that was really fucking funny. I don't, I, I know that Lane has kids, but I don't think they're old enough to be going to prom. Yeah, I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't, I can't believe it's 2022. So who knows? The last three years have been just a blur, Um, but it was very funny and it's easy to make fun of and it's Lane Kiffin, but it's also just like, it was harmless. It just looked really fucking weird to me. You know, it's a good viral Twitter moment. Yeah. It's the off season. Why not? Um, So speaking of, you know, we always, we do like the five minute drill. We do reading my DMs. Um, I really like that was, you know, the silver linings of quarantine. We're getting to like actually like, interact a lot with people um, on the Internet with college football because we just needed something to focus on. Um, so we we haven't done an, an AMA in a while, like I mentioned earlier. Again, just another reminder, because Brandon, it is his birthday and he is the king. So after this will be the Brandon interview with Mike Leach. Uh, so make sure you listen to it. I'm sure it's going to be absolute gold. Uh, but Katie went through and picked out some of the best AMAs. I will be honest, when I read through some of them, I was like dying laughing out loud. And Jack, I texted Katie separately because I wanted you, I want you to answer one of them. I'm not going to do it first. Like, I'm just going to kind of throw it in because I want your honest answer on it, but it's really fucking funny. Um, so thank you to everybody who who weighed in on Instagram. I'll be doing probably more of these. And by me sifting through them, I mean, Katie will be sifting through them, but they'll be on my Instagram. So we're going to do more of these in the off season. Um, we have to give a guy, our guy, Captain Khan's a shout out. He did weigh in. Jack, he said, which service academy will win the CIC next year and why is it Army? Well, Captain Cons always finds a way in this podcast. Always. I love Connor. I texted him whenever whenever Brandon called him a douchebag and was like, you should listen to the episode. Um, but yeah, he does. I mean, he's a big college football fan. But, you know, Brandon would call him a douche right now and then, you know, we would move on. But like, I would like it on record. Captain Cons, if you are listening to this, Connor, I love you. I don't think you're a douchebag. I don't know if Army's going to win, but if Army's going to win, great. I'm happy that you're happy. Yeah, me too. Some more merch. Yeah. Yeah, That's true. Did you guys see that? Do you know that guy, the the Yankees fan that went viral over the weekend? Yeah. Yeah. He plays football at Army. Really? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That is. I mean, he's a big boy. Yeah, it makes sense that he plays football because he's like he he looked like he you would not want to get into a fight with him, but he's he's a cadet, he's a West Point Army, he's at West Point, he plays football there. Good for him. He, I mean, that was so funny. That moment was so viral that he was a big, thick boy. So that makes sense. Um, all right, Jack, I already know you and I are going to get into an argument about this one, so just buckle up. All right, here we go. I do want your. I'm going to let Katie answer it first, okay? Because I know that you and I will go back and forth. Um, what's the ideal, this is from rich Matt Sav again, Instagram handles. I don't know what his actual name is. What's the ideal stadium to win a natty in? Uh, I would, it, this is not a great answer, but I want a stadium that's close enough for your fan base to go to and like no, go through an and answer. fill half the stands. Cause I feel like sometimes like 
if Oregon plays like in my in the um Miami the Hard Rock Stadium like it's like not a lot of people are going to go so I want a stadium like that your fan base can go to like how the um the cocktail party how that's between Georgia and Florida so the stands like fill up so I just, as long as the stadium that your fan base can like go and fill up halfway I think that's a fantastic one and that's a good answer too because you think like sometimes when you think about that it's not just like you know fans of the team it's also students like yeah. a lot of students can't just afford to fly across the country and go to, you know, stay in a hotel and whatever else. So like, that's a great answer. Uh, we all know what my answer is about to be. So Jack, you can poo poo it all you want. <laughs> Hands down the Rose bowl. Hands down. I don't hate the Rose bowl. Uh, answer there. I don't really? No, I, I think that's a good answer. That, my answer would be a place that is warm outside because, and you can go, there's like a, a place for your fans to go out afterwards. Like it's, and it's not because after Georgia won the national championship, Indianapolis is great, but it was probably like five degrees. <laughs> so I think Miami's probably not a bad place to win a national championship. Uh, the Orleans. Rose Bowl, the Rose Bowl's not bad at all. Uh, I don't, you know, Jerry's world's a little weird because there is like that, uh, like some spots around the of jerry's world but also i wouldn't say that's ideal i'm trying to think of other places um you know uh sofi that's mm-hmm. uh that's a good uh, that's a good one that's just a pretty stadium in general i feel too. yeah uh, i mean i think from like an iconic standpoint i would love the rose bowl and obviously i mean the easiest answer which will never happen is your own home stadium right i mean it's exactly. like when you see Like, you know, like Tampa Bay winning the Super Bowl, you know, I'm going to talk about Tom Brady whenever I can winning it in Tampa Bay. Like, that's fucking awesome. I think uh, winning in L.A. is awesome, but that'll never happen in college. Raymond's or the whatever it's called. Raymond James. Raymond James. It's a great place to win a a natty, I think. Yeah, I mean, I just I'll take the Rose Bowl just because I love the Rose Bowl and I think it's really pretty. So Atlanta's decent. Atlanta's eh. decent. I don't know, just, there's something so corporate about Atlanta to me. I don't know why. It's just, I mean, and, and I guess I kind of feel the same way about Indianapolis, but I mean, at the end of the day, it depends on what you're weighing when you say the best place to win. Is it close to your home? Is it close to your school? Is it like the most iconic? Is it the most fun to go out? Um, I think New Orleans is probably a pretty big, yeah, I I, I'd say that. that's a popular answer, winning it in the Superdome, um, just because you can go to Bourbon Street right after. So, but I still stick with the Rose Bowl. Um, okay, this is, T99 and Jack, you're a, you're a wrestling boxing MMA guy. Yep. Which conference would be the most entertaining coaches cage match? Oh, geez. I feel we just got, I, it's Hol- not Homer, but STC, you have Sam Pittman, you now have Brian Kelly. Um, I want, I think Lane Kiffin's going to like sneak brass knuckles in there somewhere. Mike Leach. Um, Kirby Smart would get his ass kicked. Yeah, I, I would just say SEC. It's got to be. I, feel like I don't know. SEC. Jim Harbaugh would be pretty funny. In yeah, that. Big Ten would be good, too. Big Ten would be great. So I was thinking Big Ten, but I feel like Big Ten, like w, um, the Big Ten is going to be like serious fighters. Like if you want to see like violence and like aggression, you're going to get Big Ten. Where I feel like with the SEC, you're going to get more variable like kinds of styles. So you're going to get true. like the comedic ones with like Sam Pittman trying to swing and Lane Kiffin like pulling stunts. But I feel like Big Ten, like those coaches are going to go train for that shit. Oh yeah, like, they're going to imagine like, like Coach O was still there. Like that would be great. For some reason, this just popped in my head, and obviously this is old school Big Twelve. But like, like Mac Brown versus Bob Stoops, I'd watch the shit out of that. I, I think Bob Stoops might win, but that's just solely well. No, no, Mac Brown can do no wrong. You know that. But like, think about that. Like, just the the old school Big Twelve. Like at that point, you had Mike Leach at Texas Tech. Like the Big Twelve back in those days would have been insane. Agreed. Insane. Um, okay, some of these Instagram handles are so hard to read. Um, Harold L. Stokes, I can read that one. What fan base would be the worst to deal with if they won a national title? My I answer think, to that is any of them. I think a lot of people thought Georgia's fan base was going to be tough to handle. So, and we're we're seeing that. I mean, I think A <laughs> uh, and fan base would be something. Uh, I honestly am not even going to try to debate that with you. We would be insufferable. 
Yeah. It, it really, what it is, is it's not anybody who would win. It's anybody who hasn't won in the last, like, it's like the curse, you know, it's like when the Red Sox yeah. finally broke the curse, they were insufferable, but it was like, oh my God, they finally won. If Alabama wins, like whatever, they've won it a bunch, Clemson, whatever. If A&M, who has not won a national title since the thirties wins, I will be the most insufferable person on the planet. Yeah. I, it's a fine line. Cause I feel like we're used to dealing with Alabama Clemson fans. Then look with Georgia. I, I was immune to all the obnoxiousness because, like, good for them. They hadn't won since 1980. I was kind of happy. But then I feel like, I, for me, I think I'll do Ohio State because they're always right there. Part of me is like, you know what, fine, good for them if they finally win it. But it'll be because they're always so close. Now, Oklahoma, I'm almost rooting for because Lincoln Riley left. Mm-hmm. But Oh, see I'm, see, I'm the opposite, Katie. I'm rooting for USC because I want Oklahoma fans to lose their shit. I mean, I, I, I'm rooting for USC. Is that, yes, I agree. Like, I would want to see pac 12 be good at like oklahoma fans the like, same way for brian kelly i'm like i'm okay with notre dame now i'm like you know what you brian kelly didn't think you guys would win let's i won't root for notre dame but i won't root against them we read that speaking of notre dame uh we have and i'm gonna fuck this name up and i'm sorry uh guana judo 25 instagram handles are weird how do you feel about all the shade from notre dame social media throwing sh- like at, at Brian Kelly. So it's the, the question I, I read wrong, but basically how do we feel about Notre Dame's social media team just absolutely shitting on Brian Kelly all the time? I mean, yeah, it's... It's brilliant. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's good social media, I'd say. Like, people will like it for sure. But like, I, mean, I don't... Got to troll the people. I mean, you, Jack, you run our, our account, which by the way, uh, I still would like an updated header because Brandon clearly has the password. I'm the only one in the dark without the password. Uh, Brandon's just lying to the people. Um, I got into it with some people the other day because I, I don't remember. Oh, you, Jack, I know what you posted. Or Katie, I assume it was Jack because he was talking shit about AM. Whenever the recruit came in and was like, I don't see many football trophies or whatever. And people thought that I was tweeting about it. And I was like, I didn't fucking tweet that. I don't oh, yeah, have Texas the fans. Texas fans were so. So I posted the clip of the Jonte Cook when he was at Texas. And they were so mad about it. They were like, how could you? They were like, this is so dumb. We have the most trophies ever, blah, 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 blah. And then John T. Cook went to AM and made a similar joke. And the video got released. And I think it was like on Friday, he released it or Friday night. Then the next morning, I wake up and there's all these tweets on a Sarah Roughness saying like, I bet you won't post this. I bet you won't post this. Barcelona Sports has bias against Texas. And I mean, I posted it right away. Of course, I'm going to post that. Like, there's no, we make fun of AM more than anybody else on uh, on our podcast. But, and by we, I mean you guys, because yeah, I, it's just, I can't it, say this enough. I do not have the fucking password. I don't want the fucking password. If there's shade being thrown at Texas or Baylor or any of the teams that you hear me hate, it is not me posting it. Like somebody was like, yeah, you don't think we listen to the podcast? Yeah. If you're listening to the fucking podcast, you know, I'm not posting it. I don't know what the password is. Sorry. Um, but back to my point being, I love when social teams get petty. It's great. It's it, fantastic. It's great stuff. It's when, um, Ole Miss did the, what they do for heat when Hugh freeze, they released some kind of, I'm being way too vague. Uh, so um, he, then they Hugh deleted Freeze it the when AD he apologized. When Hugh freeze, uh, before he left, when there was potential NCAA sanctions, there's a lot of rumors about Ole Miss going or paying players and whatnot. He tweeted out, if any of you have any information on any sanctions, please email what sanctions at Ole Miss.edu. And until then, please keep these players' names and families out of your mouth. And then when Ole Miss beat Liberty this year, I think it was, uh, on their final score graphic, they did that exact same copy and then they deleted it. It was funny. That's just, I thought it was it's great. great. Like, it's, I think it's more fun. All for pettiness. Fun when they have personalities. Uh, P I, this, this question, I just like, because of the way it got spun, Katie, I'm glad you added this to the list. Uh, P Flannery 29. Who do you think will have the most rushing? Please send nudes. I'm begging you. Most rushing. (laughs) That's what Jack took away from. (laughs) Uh, yeah. So maybe, yeah, maybe John Tay Gibbs at, uh, Alabama. (laughs) Yeah, no, I, I will not be sending nudes. All right, Jack. This one I saved specifically for you. All right, I'm excited. This has been a horny podcast thus far, which it always is in the off season. But is this so going to be who, from, who's has huh? the hottest wife? 
Oh no. Uh, it's even more vulgar than that. You better get ready. Oh my God. Uh, Masco M A S C H O E 14. And yes, I'm going to air you out uh, <laughs> for your, for your question, because it's a weird question to ask, but we're going to answer it. Jack, what kind of porn do you think each head coach watches? Each head coach of 131. <laughs> so here's the thing. And this is like something I, I'm pretty open about. I don't like, I don't watch porn. I've, I haven't watched porn in like forever. Um, I think like I, I recommend nobody watching porn, but uh, so I don't know the genres. <laughs> I mean, you're putting us in a hard spot here, Jack. I say Dabo for missionary or just boring. Oh, I mean, I would assume like I, I'm on social media. So like you see stuff and you get like the jokes, you know, who the porn stars are. Is there missionary porn? Do people like yes. that? Yeah. If you if you can think of it, someone's made it. Yeah. If yeah. you can even the most like vile, disgusting things. Two girls. Well, like, up. Ew, God, gross. That makes me want to die. I don't <laughs> um, like I feel like a lot of my answers would get me like they would get me canceled. I don't I'm trying to think of one that would be. That's probably oh, true. Oh, Dabo's watching like um, Dabo's watching. No, married people. That's what Dabo's watching. And then. Who would like I, Nick Saban doesn't watch porn. Um, I love that Jack's like racking his brain right now. Really I'm trying to think of coaches and like what they would want. I, I didn't actually think you were going to answer this question. So don't stress yourself. out. Like Kirby smart. Like, I don't know. Like who would be the, into some weird shit. Coach O. Well, he, he's just, no, I feel like coach O just like, probably, I don't think he's weird. He, he, he just watches regular porn. Well, yeah, but and, and here's where we'll move on so we don't get ourselves in trouble. What's regular porn? Depends on what you're watching. Am I right, Katie? Because like I will say you and I, I think you and I are the porn experts here with since Jack doesn't watch it. <laughs> yeah, no, you guys d- definitely much more than me. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I know the jokes people make about porn, but I don't know what regular porn is. Like, I would just assume like Lisa Ann. Brandon. I don't know. Brandon would probably be like Sam Pittman types in like girls with bigger tits than me um, or something like that. By the way, shout out Lisa. She's amazing. I love her so much. Like go get her book. If you're listening to Unnecessary Roughness, go get her book. It's yeah, great. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Let's what there's a ton porn? of them. Let's do a few more. Oh, here we go. I like this one. Mount St. Lucas, fuck, Mary kill NIL deals, transfer portal, 14 playoff. Kill 14 playoff. As long as there's a playoff. That's my thing. I'll kill a 14 playoff as long as there's a playoff. Yes. I'm assuming that if you're killing the CS bullshit. I'm assuming if you're killing the four team, it's for in lieu of getting bigger, like more teams, like eight or 12. Yeah. Um, I would fuck the four team. Sorry. Kill the four team playoff. Um, Marry NIL deals. Fuck transfer portal. I would agree. Yeah. Jack. Oh, yeah, I think that's the correct answer. Maybe like you marry. Tr- no, I think I have the same as Katie. Um, yeah, I do. Like the- now, I will say, obviously, that he didn't, you know, this guy didn't preface it. If it's 14 playoff versus a BCS, then that changes. That's, yeah. That changes things. But if it's to, in lieu of you're killing four to get eight or 12, then yeah. Um, oh, my God. See, I, I said we didn't get pervy ones. I literally pulled out like the two of them that were this kind. Well, Rayball dot one. If Notre Dame goes undefeated this season, can I eat your ass? Well, <laughs> that's not going to happen. So sure. <laughs> Jack's like, Jack's like, well, no, that's not going to happen. Not like, no, you can't eat my ass. Rayball dot one. That's so our ball. Our ball. Also, Jesus is watching. Picking Notre Dame for that, and then saying that, saying that, can I eat your ass off of the Notre Dame thing? <laughs> like, come on, like, G, like, there's touchdown Jesus. He doesn't want you or asking random girls you don't know to eat their ass. Jesus doesn't. 
Touchdown Jesus does not approve. Yeah, I'm telling he's... you, like, you know, we every time we have ads where Brandon gets to do Roman ads, you know, it gets pretty, uh, pretty loose. I still feel like somehow, even though Brandon is a massive perv himself, when he's not here, these podcasts go off the fucking rails. Well, yeah, so I mean, that's us. that's like a wild. Uh, yeah, Notre Dame's not going undefeated. If you, that was actually a thing, like a bet, Notre Dame wouldn't go undefeated because Jesus wouldn't let it happen. Yeah, and also, like, I'm not letting a random person from the internet do something. I'm just saying, like, let's say it was, like, yeah, this is it. This is the biggest thing of your life. Like, it has to happen for some reason or you die. You have to accept the bet. Jesus wouldn't let it happen. Jesus would just take me to heaven instead of letting that happen. No, Notre Dame would lose. Oh, gotcha. Lose. Okay. Okay, I see what you mean. He would, and then he you're would look guaranteed, out. He'd be looking out. And then you're guaranteed an entry to heaven. For I, I know it's not this guy because I know that what this guy's social media handle is, but what if that guy was the guy who has my face tattooed on his thigh? You remember is what was that guy who called you what sexy mama or something? He, ha- I think he's not been in the DMS. Uh, well, I will say I haven't been checking the other ones in a long time because we haven't done a read my DM segment. So maybe he is, but sexy baby. I feel like he might've died. Maybe, you know what, maybe like his wife or girlfriend or whatever saw the messages and was like, you got to stop calling Casey sexy baby or we're, we're, we're through it. We're done. Maybe he moved on to another one. Maybe I, maybe That's I'm a good old point. news. I'm old news. Um, okay. We'll do a few more. Uh, I like this one. I'm what? sorry. There's the, the, from the Papa angel, how many wins does USC have to have for it to be considered a successful year? I say they have to probably win the Pac-12 at, just due to the hype. I don't agree with that, but I think with the hype that the media has created, unless they're at least in the game or if not win it, I think people are going to be pissed. I think eight wins. I was going to say like seven or eight. I mean, I see and, what you mean, Katie, because obviously. And they, they play everyone close and potentially like maybe they beat UCLA. That would probably be a yeah. Success. I mean, Oklahoma fans, if they, you know, they're gonna shit on it no matter what. But I, I like that question. I, you know, part of me wants to be like, well, if they make a bowl game, but I mean, in the Pac-12, if you don't make a bowl game, you're really fucking shitty. And yeah. Lincoln Riley shouldn't have a team with a losing record. I would say probably eight is a good yeah. starting point. But you're right, Katie, that I do think a lot of people will talk shit if they're not at the top of the Pac-12 or and in the eight, discussion for sure. Eight and four with a like solid season in terms of you see the potential success down the road, right? And uh, maybe they're in uh, like the holiday bowl or something and they beat a pretty good Big Ten team and on national TV and show that, hey, we're we're going to be good in the future. That could be that would be a successful season in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I also think with the Pac-12's history that you can still be eight and four and in the in the championship game. I'm just going to go to the bathroom really quick. I'm really sorry. Hey, first time. What was the question you were going to ask Casey? I'll wait for Jack. We'll wait for Jack. Time out okay. for Jack. All right, let's do like one or two more. Um, let's see. So many people. I, I love how many people like submit this shit. Um, oh, this is a good one because I know what Jack's going to say and it's going to piss me off, but might as well end on a pissed off note. Uh, Boulder Bebbington, I think. Be- Bebbington. What program besides your own would you like to see? air quotes back jack don't do it to me i know you're going to i mean texas being back would be great but uh <clears throat> miami obviously miami would be cool too okay that's a good one i would say so my my answers were um, I think USC, we've been talking about that. I would also love to see Lincoln Riley just yep. piss everybody off and Miami because, you know, early two thousands, Miami was great. And I will admit Texas being really good is great for the sport. Nebraska I want to see good. them back, but it is good for the sport. Nebraska. Would be yeah. Good. I was going to say Nebraska. Nebraska and then I'll, this might be, I think I make a pushback on this, but I'm going to say Tennessee. Oh, okay. I know their yeah. fans would be a lot, but. I just the more the the more disparity, like I still feel there's devotion there that it's like not far off to get people back on board for like UCLA. I feel maybe on the field wise, they might be closer to getting back. But like I feel off the field, there's just no interest. Whereas with like Nebraska and Tennessee, the fans are still right there. So it wouldn't take much to get them to be like, let's go. 
And I will say with Tennessee, um, like, you know, people love Peyton Manning right now. Like the Manning cast was one of my favorite things that ESPN's ever done. And I fucking hate ESPN. So Peyton Manning's like, he's on the up and up as like a likable person anyways. Like people already liked him, especially if you went to Tennessee, but now like Peyton Manning's getting to show his personality. If Tennessee was really good, like think about how much Peyton Manning we would get. I'm okay with that. Yeah, no, Tennessee being back would be awesome. That's a really good answer. Great answer. Um, we... I also, I'm, um, you know, I see drink every time I bring up Tom Brady on a college football podcast. If Michigan was really good, I would love to see Tom Brady back at Michigan all the time. Yeah, Michigan's like they're not back, but they're close. You know. Yeah, they're they're like in that conversation of still also like what what is their bar of being back? Like, imagine where's the hype? Right. Um, well, I mean, yeah, because obviously they made the playoff last year, but imagine. And I can't believe they didn't do it this year, to be completely honest, unless they did. And I completely missed it. Did Tom Brady do a hype video for Michigan at all? Um, Not that I would. Maybe he voiced. Like a voiceover from Tom Brady. Like they really fucked up on that one if they didn't have him do that. And I don't remember them doing that. I feel like I wouldn't remember that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think, but I don't. Massive miss. Massive miss. The only uh, the other one thing I wanted to bring up that I just remembered. There's like a, a discussion out there, which is actually kind of interesting. The Arch Manning is interested in going to UVA, uh, which is like so crazy. I thought it was a joke at first, but I guess. So Peyton Manning's wife went to UVA. Uh, Arch's, uh, Arch's mother went to UVA. His sister goes to UVA. Like Everybody in uh, his mother's family went to UVA, uh, Peyton Manning, like I said, Peyton Manning's wife went to, like, it's, I, I don't know. That's kind of crazy. If he did end up on UVA, I don't think he would. I think it's down to like the Georgias, Texas, Bama's of the world, but the, the Arch Manning watch is going to be so fun. Like it's going to be ridiculous. He's about to be a senior. Like he's about to be a senior. Like he's going to have to decide. I know within the it's, next eight months or so. And it's going to be fun to watch because people are already so obsessed with it, but like, it's going to give us such great, great. Uh, yeah, I wonder, I wonder how he'll do it. Like, will he make it a big production or just like Absolutely. something out? The wonder if we can reach out. Making a big production. Yeah. You, there's Katie's business mind going. We should reach out and do it with them. I, Cause like, there's collab features now. Like no, why yeah, can't yeah, we, yeah. we should be able to get, be like, Hey, we're a huge brand with like, we can I do it in Barstool, Maine, especially with someone that big. ESPN, like, ESPN may own the Manning family at this point. Um, that's true. Probably my biggest thing with Arch and the like, same with Quinn. I hope they live up to the hype. Like I yeah. just like, that'll be good for the sport. That'll well, be good for them. Can't this, have a shitty Manning out there now after all these classic decades. or this quarterback class coming up is insane. It has mm-hmm. uh, Malachi Nelson that's going to USC to be a quarterback. He's a five star. They have the kid that Tennessee famously signed for eight million dollars. Not Tennessee, their NIL collective, but um, the uh, Nico Imaleva and Arch. Though, like uh, I was reading up on it, those three would be number one in like most classes, and they're all in the same class. Uh, speaking of NIL collectives, Alabama launched their own one. Uh, do you know who runs Georgia's NIL collective? Who? The guy who used who came from Georgia, assistant AD, to go work at or to come work at Barstool for Barstool athletes. Then he left to go run uh, NIL collective for Georgia. I did not know that. Um. Jack yeah. spilling the tea. Good for you. You're in the I, know. I, my conspiracy mind was like, did Georgia send him the bar stool just so he could get <laughs> away because they knew they would launch this NIL collective down the road and they didn't, they knew they couldn't just take the assistant AD and put him in that role. Good they point. needed him to be an in-between. I'm not accusing. Um, I think the guy who allegedly you're allegedly and you know, I, the guy who worked theory. The guy who worked for us, I, everyone got along with too. It wasn't like yeah, just, no, he was great at it. It was great. Conspiracy theory. We're all, we're here for those. I just like George is saying like, hey, go wink, wink, go get another job, and stay in Georgia, and then 
maybe in a year you get to know the NIL landscape a little bit more, what place mm-hmm. to do it better than an emerging media company. And then you can come back and run our NIL collection. Yeah. It yeah. would be a smart, it would be a smart way to do it. If Savvy. you were Georgia. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Uh, there know? is one question on here that I think would be good debating at people on Twitter. Um, Yexen says, what would be the perfect meal to watch college football with? Little Smokies. And- yeah, I, which if it was bigger or more, I it's only in the south. There's got to be more. I mean, yeah, Katie, football's better in the south. Yeah, probably. Put some I south think in like your wings, mouth. Some mm. mac and cheese, mac and cheese, pimento cheese dips, dips. Okay, but what if, if you could have so much one thing to watch football with? One uh, high noon. I'm gonna say high noon. That, but we're all having high noon. Food wise, it's dips because I think I love wings as much as the next person, but like wait, you, it needs to be something you can pick up and put down and have clean hands. I feel like wings, like you don't like it's it's as much as, as much as it's fun to tailgate with. It's so messy, so I think it needs to be something like fork or dip wise. You can kind of like put up and put down. Okay, I'm going a little Smokies, Jack. Round us out. Jeez, did you say cheese? No, or I geez. think cheese. Uh, well, cheese is a great answer, to be honest. Pimento. Gee, uh, I don't know. I just like all food. Fair enough. Fair Wings enough. Wings are all good. Right. Wings are good. Eh, overrated. Wings are good. Bone in. Bone in. Wings are overrated. Don't look at me like that, Katie. Don't look at me. I'm literally, the moment this podcast is done, I'm about to go to like an all you can eat wing Wednesday that I've been fasting for all day. Where? Do not. Um, I'm in upstate New York right now, so it's oh, not nice. So I'm like been counting down the minutes. My my dad is sticking his head in the window, being like, "Are you done yet? I want to go." You know what I want to do right now? Don't shame I want wings. To do what the high school like ba- high school basketball teams do when they chant "overrated." That's what I want to do at you right now. I'm not going to do little it because smokies I know you- are overrated. Then oh, you've never even had a fucking little smoke. I don't need to. I have wings. That bullshit. I'm going to make them when we're all back in New York. I'm going to make them. <laughs> all right. So the inmates ran the asylum today. Uh, thanks for listening. And now, without further ado, the birthday boy, Mr. Tom and Brandis Walker. Brandis? Mr. Thomas Brandon Walker interviewing his favorite head coach, Mike Leach. All right, YouTube. Thanks for watching. Uh, as we've mentioned a million times in this episode, Brandon Walker did interview Mike Leach. We have a separate video on our YouTube page, so it's linked below, or you can just go follow our YouTube page as you should anyways, and find that video. I'm sure Brandon will be giggling and his hair is going to look great. Again, like, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching.